One of the simplest ways to get noticeably different flavors out of your coffee is to start pulling old school single shots, which is not quite what you're looking at here. This is a double shot divided. Is there a difference? Absolutely. Should you care? Well, I think so. So go dig this little gadget out of the junk drawer that you tossed it in when you unpacked your machine and put away those triple baskets. But Thomas, I hear you thinking. That's what professionals use. And you are right. In a commercial environment, it makes practical sense to pull doubles and triples and split them. But that's done for efficiency, for customer throughput, not flavor. Look at these two baskets. And I don't mean just the capacity. The shapes are completely different. The big Franken basket is square and flat with a large filter area. The little single shot basket is curved and pinched with a very narrow filter area. Liquid is going to move through them very differently. But these little fellows are tricky to use. Here's your fill range, the straight sidewall just below the ridge. If you have too little coffee, you can't tamp it properly. If you have too much, you'll get a messy, cracked puck. So establish the right dose of coffee first. I'll use the shower screen test to confirm that there's enough headroom, but not too much. The smaller coin leaves no impression. The thicker one is obviously pressing, so much that it cracks the puck. Now I know that I have more than one and a half millimeters and less than two millimeters between the shower screen and the coffee, which is perfect. It turns out that 11 and a half grams of the coffee I'm using here occupies the right volume for this basket. Your mileage will vary. Dialing in the grind and shot time is also tricky because the adjustment window is narrow there as well. You will be grinding larger than you're accustomed to. I find myself grinding between one and two numerals coarser on the Eureka and five to 10 marks coarser on the Niche Zero. This type of basket is very sensitive to small changes, which I suppose explains its unpopularity. But I think mastering it is well worth the effort. Let me show you why. Oh my God. It's like a miracle. I'll start with full disclosure. My personal sweet spot for espresso with pretty much any coffee is between 15 and 17 grams with a one to two and a quarter ratio, meaning around a 36 gram yield with a flow rate of one and a half seconds per milliliter out. Here with around 11 and a half grams, I aim for a one to two ratio and a flow rate of two seconds per gram because of the larger particle size. I want a little more contact time, relatively speaking. When you're about dialed in, pull a couple of shots using a bottomless portafilter to verify that you have no major mechanical defects. A closed bottom portafilter has slightly better thermal characteristics, especially with small shots. But this is an important check, so don't skip it. I'll do a leisurely pre-infusion, then an 8-bar pull, coasting to the finish for 22 grams out. I'd call this dialed in. Let's watch from eye level. People have said that when it comes to coffee prep, I'm a bit cavalier, but I don't see any need for fussiness. I tamp by feel and that works fine. Just match the dose to the basket or the basket to the dose and all that cracked puck and channeling business goes right out the window where it belongs. In my experience, prep issues come down to baskets being underfilled or overfilled. I've got a video about filling your portafilter correctly if you're curious. It can save you a lot of bother. You might have noticed that I'm no longer using the flow control kit. I'll do a separate video explaining that, but for now, yeah, I didn't love it. You can get a perfectly good Slayer type shot with any E61 machine so long as you have a pressure gauge here at the group. I do it like this. Pump in some water, let it seep, Maybe add a little more and simply make sure that you keep some positive pressure going. The only thing you can do wrong is accidentally open the exhaust valve. 
Once it registers a gram on the scale, which I like to see happen in 10 or 20 seconds, depending on the size of the dose, I'll engage the pump and start timing from that moment, looking for 2 seconds per gram or milliliter out, which you can see is right where we are. I like 8 or 9 bar pressure. I'm set up for 8 at the moment. When I hit around 17 or 18 grams yield, I'll switch off the pump and let it coast to the target of around 22. Just take care not to open the exhaust valve prematurely. You don't need a slayer, you don't need mains pressure, and you don't need a flow control kit. Just a group mounted pressure gauge and your hand on the switch. The aftermath looks like this. I've had to move the light and camera, so the coffee got kind of baked thanks to the delay. I should have unmounted it immediately, but it still shows me what I want to see. Mechanically, it's flawless. No puddles, no divots, dead level. This will knock out cleanly with a single smack, because it occupies the correct volume. I can't repeat that enough. The cross-section here gives you an idea of the challenge you're going to face, and the patience you'll need to dial everything in. The shape is kind of crazy. I think it's safe to say that it's going to create a very energetic environment for liquid and solids to interact, much more so than a straight basket. The shoulder is very thin, as I said, and it wants to wash away during the pull, so if your grind, your tamp, or your volume should be off, you're going to have difficulty. We've got a nice, fine-grained mousse here. It tastes good to me. It's definitely lighter in texture than my preferred 16 gram shot, but it doesn't taste under extracted. On the contrary, I pick up more of the earthy, mushroomy, toasted bread flavors and bitterness that you associate with old fashioned cafes. This is a bit milder and a bit rounder than a larger shot. It's not my absolute favorite, but it's good and it's easy to drink with less palate fatigue. I'll use the same 11.5 gram dose with this flat, straight-sided basket and compare the flavor. I can keep every variable the same except the grit size. With so much more filter area, I have to grind finer to keep the same shot time. It's big for the dose, so there's a lot of head space, but I did get a solid temp thanks to the relatively straight sides. I'm using this mesh screen that's about 2 millimeters thick. It's a handy spacer. It's also very good for keeping your group clean, about which I'll say more in an upcoming video. The space is still bigger than I'd prefer, but this is my smallest straight basket, so this is what we've got. The mousse looks maybe a touch coarser and not quite as abundant. The flavor is definitely different. Tasting the two shots in succession, I prefer the little tapered one for plain espresso and the straight one for Americanos. Coffee from the straight basket is a little richer with a more complex flavor and some noticeable brightness. And that makes sense. Smaller particles present more surface area to the water, while the larger filter area allows more fines into the cup. So to recap, the classic single is a challenge. You need just the right dose and just the right grind. I've been temperature surfing a lot with this and I'm inclined to drop my usual water temperature for whichever coffee I'm dealing with by one or two degrees to keep the bitterness in balance. It draws a different range of flavors from a given sample of coffee which might be more or less to your taste. Of course, there's only one way to find out. It's certainly worth mastering and keeping in your repertoire. Next time, I'm going to show you just how clean your machine can be without chemicals or any heroic labor. So, keep in touch. Cheers!